What is happening, y'all? Cowboy here, and the reason I'm standing naked in front of you today is it's time to talk about stat growth and vocations in Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, for those that didn't play the original, the vocation you were when you leveled up was very significant in terms of your stat growth. So much so that if you wanted to play a Mystic Knight, your ideal leveling would be like 1 to 10 as Fighter, and then 10 to 30 as Warrior, and then going up to 60 as Ranger for some stamina, and then, you know, you would go 100 to 200 as a sorcerer to pump your magic. And at that point, you had the ideal magic knight, you know, and a lot of people weren't really a big fan of that because it felt like you were playing the entire game as a thing you didn't want to be to finally be optimal at what you want it to be. So when this game was in preview, some people were saying that, you know, play whatever you want, switch between all the classes, I myself included, I was saying this and, you know, your stats are going to shift. And then recently I've had people say, no, your, your stats aren't going to shift that significant. It is still important what uh, what vocation you are as you level. And so I wanted to actually take an in-depth look at this, which is exactly what this video is for. Now, for context here, my character was leveled primarily as a fighter. After I got fighter close to max, I ended up swapping to Mystic Spearhand, maxed that, went to Warrior and maxed that, dabbled in Trickster a little bit. From there, I maxed out Magic Archer, and then I switched over to Warfare, which levels up everything. So that's why my Archer, Mage, Thief, and Sorcerer are all at five. Uh, you know, Trickster was at like five or six, but Warfare levels up all your vocations. So uh, majority of my levels, though, were spent as either a Fighter or a Warrior or a Mystic Spearhand. By the time I did the Trickster and the Magic Archer stuff, I was majority through Act 2, so I was probably already like level, I don't know, say 55 or 60 at that point. But either way, by comparison, if we look over at Liliana, the majority of her levels were as a mage or a sorcerer. She did a little dip into thief to get subtlety, but I would say probably 60 out of the 69 levels she has has been as one of those magic focused classes. Additionally, right now, we don't have any augments on that would have an impact on the two stats we're going to be looking at, and we don't have any gear that would impact the stats we're going to be looking at. So. With that out of the way, let's go and actually just take a look at the raw stats. Now, right now we are both as a mage class and what we're looking at here is magic. The base magic on my character is at 265 while the base character on Liliana is at 367. Now that's a 40% difference in the magic. And you're probably like, whoa, 40%, you know, that's, that's huge. That is a, a big difference in stat growth. And I would absolutely agree. However, once we add the weapon into account, we can see my magic with this equipped will go up to 759. In a similar fashion, if I put it on Liliana, it's going to go up to 861. And the damage difference between those two is only 13%, comparatively speaking. By the same test here, Hi, no need to we are going to change our vocation and we're going to go the complete opposite end of the spectrum. We'll go to a thief. Change it on a whim. Pleasure doing business. And we can see that looking at our stats here, I have a base strength of 300, while Liliana has a base strength of 215. And once again, this is roughly a 40% difference. But once again, when we take the weapon into account, she goes up to 649, and putting it on my main character, he goes up to 734. How big is that damage difference? You guessed it, about 13% once again. So what does this mean? What does this all boil down to? What's the point of this video? Uh, ultimately, what this comes down to is when you take your weapon, your upgraded weapon into account, and we're looking at characters that are getting towards end game here. Ultimately, if you decided to level up everything versus leveling up a couple specific things, if you wanted to be, you know, multi-man as opposed to just staying as a caster, the grand difference in your damage is going to boil down to roughly 13%. Now, personally, I don't think that's significant. I'm more than willing to take a 13% uh, stat hit for the freedom to play all of these different classes as I level up. Uh, if you're not, then now you know. But I've just seen a lot of discussion on this lately and a lot of questions surrounding it. So I wanted to do a video break it down and just give you the information to decide for yourself. So make of that what you will. That is going to wrap things up for Naked Cowboy. And uh, 
Well, I'm a little bit hesitant about doing it because I like the idea of the surprise. I think I'm going to actually do a video on Dragon's Plague because I've seen a lot of people uh, afraid of it and discussing it lately. So I think it's probably time to get one of those out. But either way, closing out things here, and I will catch you later with a new guide.